Hey everybody, I wanted to shoot off a quick video here because there's something that's been really troubling me, uh, a troubling trend I've been seeing, uh, especially in hiring circles and job market and recruiting circles. A lot of the people that I will be talking to, especially job seekers who are in the midst of trying to get something better for themselves, they're really in a bad state emotionally. And a big part of that is because a lot of the people that they're soliciting for an opinion, you know, to say, how good is this resume? Or what do you think about my LinkedIn presence? Or what did you think of, how do you think I did in that interview? The feedback they'll get is not just negative, but it's emotionally loaded. A lot of people, some to frankly make a sale and bring you on board as a client, is going to prey on the fact that a job search is a very emotionally vulnerable time. They're going to say, oh, this is terrible, this is beneath you, this is absolutely not what you deserve. And they'll start tearing into not just the resume or something that you have, but almost casting aspersions on your professional abilities, making it seem that if you don't work with this person or if you don't do this change, then you're lesser than, you're in fact lesser th of a candidate than someone else. And I just want to say that is bull. I've worked with people for over a decade now. I've worked with executives. I've worked with senior leadership. I've worked with amazingly talented, passionate people. And the number of people who are not getting the attention and the job offers that they deserve because of something that is fundamentally wrong in their work history or their career is infinitesimally small. People think that that's the number one reason. It is not. It's not. It's not. Now, there are people who are misguided. There are people out there who, yes, have something maybe a little off upstairs where they're going for something that is five or ten steps above what they should be going for right now. And that's not what I'm talking about. The vast majority of people that I see, they're not dealing with that issue. They're dealing with an issue of not knowing how to play this game. And make no mistake, okay, the hiring game, the job search game, the leveling up game is a game that has nothing to do with you being a good employee or you being good at your job. You're being amazing at what you do and you're being amazing at the job search are two totally separate things. And the faster you can get your mind around that, the easier of a time you're going to have for anything else. So let me just share a quick story from my own life because I really think that it is impossible to be satisfied long term in your career unless you make this distinction that I'm talking about. I started this business from a one room in the apartment that me and my wife and a big fat cat shared. Uh, it was one very messy room and I spent basically what felt like 24, 36 out of every 24 hours there stuck in there trying to make this thing work, trying to get it off the ground. I can't tell you what a nightmare it was in the first couple of years and if I look back, the number one reason why it was a nightmare was because the whole process of getting business was totally foreign to me. I was a journalist, I was a resume writer, I was an interview coach. I was an author. I was not a salesman. I business development was did not come easily to me. So I just ignored it. And what I said, and this is what many job seekers do as well, they say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about the hows. I'm just going to put myself out there and I'm going to see what happens. Have you said that to yourself? I'm I don't know if 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 now's the time for me to get something better, even though in your mind you know it probably is. I just want to see what's out there. I want to see what happens. We all do that. Seeing what happens, though, is not a game plan. And for me, seeing what was going to happen in terms of business was also really not a game plan. The joys that I had in working with people and seeing them achieve amazing outcomes took a backseat to this torture session where every morning I'd wake up and I would desperately check my emails hoping that someone was going to ask for my help today. You know, every day I would try LinkedIn or I would try cold calling or I'd try cold events or whatever I could to make it happen. And some worked, most didn't. And when it did, I didn't know why it was working. I wasn't tracking anything. And so I didn't know. And so my wife and then later our kids, you know, in the early days, I'm going to be very real with you. They suffered the negative effects 
emotionally of what was going on in my business. You know, I couldn't dissociate. There was no dissociating. Because for me, if I was doing well, then I was a superstar. I was a superstar at what I did. And if I wasn't getting business, then I was a loser and I was lame and I was a failure. The emotions were just accentuating and magnifying what really was a business challenge. And so what changed it for me was one of these super depressing days, my wife comes down into my office and she says, Anish, what if you're not good at this? You're good at helping people. You're good at advising. You're good at guiding and giving people systems and strategies, but you're not a salesman, right? You don't know how to develop a business. You don't want to, or you would have learned it. So why don't we delegate? Why don't we start by just analyzing what you're doing right now and see what works and what doesn't? And I must have been ready to listen because I said sure. And over the course of the next three months, we tracked every email that I sent. We tracked every activity. We wanted to see what was generally working, what was not. And that was an eye opener because I realized that 90% of what I was doing, just like 90% of what job seekers are doing out there, um, maybe it made me feel good that I was running a business, but it wasn't generating attention. Same thing I would say for a job seeker is if what you're doing is not giving you interviews and not just interviews, it's not giving you interviews where you have equal status to the employer and you are having a one of one conversation that is about you and what only you can provide. No comparisons to you and anybody else. If that's happened, something has gone wrong. If that's not happening, then regardless of how much time you're spending, regardless of whether you wake up every day and you spend eight hours, it doesn't matter. If those eight hours are not productive, you're not seeing the results, it doesn't matter. So that's what we started to do. It uh, totally changed my business because I started to see the difference between what was working and what's not. And things that were sidelines became priorities and I started funneling more attention, money and resources into those and my business started to grow. More importantly, we had a system for tracking this, tracking how many people Uh, went from cold leads into active clients, tracking what the long-term customer satisfaction was, tracking every email that I sent, having a system there. So learning what was working, developing better tools and better processes, and then implementing the best practices. When you have something that works, you're going to use that from now on. That is a foundational element. Here's my point. We've established that your job search bears, in most cases, zero relationship to your talents as a professional. We know that. Let's just cut that, okay? No emotion here. We're looking at it as business people will do. We're looking at a problem, looking to solve it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you, moving forward, to think about these words. Learning, developing, and implementing best practices. When it comes to learning, here's what I want you to do. Forget about job postings. Job postings are notoriously unreliable for understanding what a job is actually going to entail. If you want to know what it, what it really will, it's your competition. It's the people who actually have the job that you want. So, for example, if you are looking for a financial planning analysis and analysis position, The first thing you need to do is go on LinkedIn, start playing around with the advanced search, and start building a list of LinkedIn URLs of direct competitors, people who are one to two steps max ahead of where you are and are working at companies that you want to be working in. These are your competition. You are going to be benchmarking them, not job postings moving forward. Real flesh and blood people who are highly visible on LinkedIn because they're doing something that works, and we want to pattern that. That's step one. Step two, developing. All right, you can't develop great tools unless you're asking real questions of people and you're soliciting opinions from people who are not instantly wanting to protect your feelings or want you to be okay. That's a wonderful thing, but that's not going to help you here. So I want you to start putting out what you have, okay? And I want you to start asking people. Ask people on LinkedIn who you trust. Ask people in your email list who you trust. Ask peers, former bosses, people who are in your corner but who are also not going to be afraid to give you the the raw deal, I want you to start sending them your resume, your LinkedIn profile. I want you to ask them, say, hey, look, this is what I've been worried about. I keep hearing X, but I feel Y. What do you think? I'd really trust an, uh, an honest opinion there. I would be so grateful for it. You're asking for help, and I want you to start collecting 
this information in terms of what's working and what's not. Because again, the, a resume is not personal. A resume is not personal. It is not a reflection on you. It is just a tool that you are using to accomplish this business goal. Finally, implementing best practices. As things work, I want you to take notes of it and use it. If you send an email to a recruiter that sounds great and works great and gets them on the phone, from then on, I want you to use and save that email. Save it as a draft, save it as an MS Word file, do it the way that you want to do it. But from then on, every other situation with the recruiter that needs that response, you're going to copy and paste that message, tweak it, and send it. In other words, you are building success on success. The minute something works in your job search, I want you to see about repeating it as close to verbatim or action by action as possible. That way you're going to build that system. Another tip for this implementing best practices, immediately after an interview, your next interview, like if you're in the car or you're in the parking lot, I want you to pull out a notepad and I want you to sketch out and just run, write down every possible finding that you have. I want you to remember as much as you can because those first 15 to 20 minutes after an interview, your mind is rich with insights that you're gonna slowly start getting auto-deleted from your mind as time passes. So don't wait till you're back at the hotel or back at your house. Don't wait till you're back on the plane. I want you to write in that parking lot, pull up a notepad. I don't care if it takes 10, 15, 20 minutes, write down everything, every perception, every question, everything that worked, everything that didn't. This is gonna give you documentation, stuff that you can use, stuff that you can look back, real proof beyond your emotions in terms of what's working, what's not. So from now on, I want you to make this your mantra. Number one, the job search is business, it's not personal. Number two, how can I learn what the competition is doing? How can I develop better tools by asking questions of people I trust, but people who are gonna be real with me? And number three, how can I implement best practices? How can I report and document everything that I'm doing? And how can I, as soon as something works, save it so I can reuse it? If you do this, you are gonna see a tremendous change in what you have out there. And I hope that you're not going to be lost as I was lost trying to do something but not knowing a way to do it. This is a much better way. This is not an emotional way. This is a success driven way. And I really hope that you will take the time to do this because it truly changed my life. And go easy on yourself. You are going after something better in life and that deserves to be celebrated. Truly. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch soon.